I need to look at myself in the mirror. Stop making Barbie outfits. <laughs> So I've heard that there are 40 costumes that Margot wears as Barbie in this movie. And I know I said that I was going to make them all, but I just don't know if I can. Honestly, it's not I don't know if I can, it's I don't know if I should for my financial and mental health. But we'll see. Hey guys, I'm Mackenzie and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I take you behind the scenes on my latest cosplay journey. Today's video is covering yet another outfit from the Barbie movie, which the internet and Mattel have called the perfect day dress based on what the doll that wears this dress is called. So we're gonna call it the perfect day dress as well because that's its name. But anyways, I'll be taking you through the process of how I made this dress, which is 50% exactly the same as the beach dress, which uses the same exact fabric. So lucky for you, if you're interested in that, it's basically the same thing for the whole top process. And I already have a video out on my channel, which I will link up here and in the description below in case you're interested in seeing that process and making that version. So there's only three components to this outfit. It's pretty simple. We've got the dress, we've got the belt, and then we've got the jewelry. So I don't have the earrings pictured here because my mannequin doesn't have a head, but I will show you what those look like and what the process was to make those. Let's talk through the plan, shall we? So I have this fabric. And spoiler alert, I already started working on it in the background, but I have a lot of yards of this fabric and it came ironically on the day that the Barbie trailer dropped. And I had been waiting for it for like three weeks to a month, so what perfect timing. So anyways, this fabric is obviously our pink buffalo plaid fabric, gingham, whatever you want to call it. I think it's technically buffalo plaid if we're, we're speaking in search keywords. So I have seven yards of this, and I got eight yards, a full bolt of this polyester lining fabric. So here she is in all her glory. And let me show you what it does because this is kind of see-through as is, like you could see my pink shirt through it. But if we line it, it makes the colors look more saturated. So that's the plan. Just do everything and just line it with this. And I am notorious for not lining things and not knowing how to line things. So this is gonna be a step forward in my sewing journey. And I gotta say guys, I think that this fabric is the exact same one that Margot's dresses are made out of. If not, it is so similar, I can't even tell the difference because even the grid size matches up. So I can say, okay, Margot has, the dart at the waistline is five squares long and each square is an inch. So it like kind of makes it easier for me to figure out sizing and things. So I know, okay, it's five, squares across the bottom and it's seven across the top. So I know like put my pin there, put my pin there, trace it with my straight edge and then I can pin it. But this is my box pleat plan. I think it's gonna work. All right, so let's get into doing all this for real. All right, so in the background of all those videos that you just saw, I had a bodice that I had previously done, but I actually have done this bodice three times because I kept messing up the grid and how high up the uh, straps actually have to come because it has that like U neck. So this is just me putting that together. And once I had that figured out, I sewed down all the edges and made a very crispy seam with the iron. And then I'm going to be doing the same exact thing with the lining fabric, which luckily I can see through so I can see where all the seams are and match that up with the pins as best I can. And here's what it should look like as far as where the seams go. There's two in the front towards the waist and then two on the sides to make the boob dart things. And once I did the same sewing technique for the lining, I am very carefully aligning the seams with the right sides together to line this thing. And I'm trying to do it right because I'm trying to actually learn how to line things as I make these outfits and not just like perpetuate my, I can make that, it's probably good enough mindset. And while this was still on my mannequin, I went and I traced out how I wanted the neckline to be and then just sewed over it. And it was so easy to make it symmetrical because of the grid pattern. It was like so much easier than normal. Then I made some real quick straps, which are like about a half an inch. If each one of these grid squares is an inch, I think the straps are half inch. And then I just did the little snake tube method to turn them inside out. And I just sewed them through on the holes that I left for the straps. And I'm just sewing this down now that I have my lining nice and crispy. Then I'm doing this stitch, which is called a basting stitch. And this is part of the lining journey. And I think it was a success. All right, checking in. This is what the front is looking like. It's 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 
it's working, but it did take me three tries to do this, which was very frustrating. I have like, I have two other bodices that are not it, but this is it. So now we have to move forward. I'm making the back. So obviously it's gonna attach here, a, a piece. I'm just making like two rectangles. And uh, I was pretty confident this was the right color. It's not. So I think I'm gonna get a white zipper. And then what apparently I am not showing you is that I did make two rectangles for the back of the bodice and I just sewed them on. It's very self-explanatory. This is what it looks like when it's done. But I apparently did not film that process because it's just me and I can't be trusted. Now I'm moving on to making the skirt, which I believe is using six yards of this fabric and I'm just lining it with my white lining fabric and using all of these wonder clips to keep it together before I go ahead and sew it down because I don't want these two pieces separating as I'm pleating them because it just will be confusing. On to the actual pleating. So I am doing a method here of box pleats where I skip three and align at the next color that makes sense in the pattern. So you see how it goes dark to light and I connect them. So it's like a seamless transition and still keeps the grid. Yes, it looks good. If I had more fabric, I probably would have done a deeper pleat because when I twirl in this, it's just not as like floofy as I want it to be, if that makes sense. I don't think that's the right word, but that's my note. But here's what it looks like with all of those lined up. And I think I have nine box pleats here and that happened to work out for my waist measurement um, with the seam allowance. So then I'm just going over and keeping all the clips in place and sewing it down and just making sure that all of my pleats stay aligned. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to be connecting it to the top. And oh look, there are those edge pieces or back pieces that I never originally showed you guys how I made. But anyways, I'm pinning this down. And then I'm just going to very carefully sew it over and I'm trying to align everything so that all of the boxes line up, which was pretty tricky, but it ended up working out. Then I'm just closing it up with an invisible zipper in the back, which I had to undo and redo a couple times because nothing can ever be perfect on the first try and that's okay. Then I just had to hem it after that and the dress part was done. And then we're moving on to the accessories. Margot wears a giant bow made out of the same fabric in the back of her half up half done ponytail. So I'm going to be using all of these pieces to make two bows. This is just because I was making those two dresses simultaneously and that dress calls for two of these exact same bows. So three total, but this is the process. So I made a bunch of rectangles and I'm folding them in upon themselves. And then I had to do a lot of hand sewing to make sure this would stay down because my machine just couldn't handle it. So these are all the final pieces together and we just sew them together and it becomes a beautiful little bow. Well, not little, it's pretty big. And here's what it looks like all put together and attached the wig. If you guys want a full tutorial on this hairstyle, let me know and I'm happy to make one. Our next accessory is the one that I get the most questions about, which is her flower jewelry. So I had a really, really hard time finding the right sized flower beads for this that were also the right shape. So these are the ones that I got on Amazon after a lot of extensive research. And then I ended up having to spray paint them flat white because they were like a pearlescent ivory, which wasn't gonna work for me. Anyway, so then I like to do my jewelry on wire just so I can shape it the way I want it to be. <laughs> I'm gonna be using these light pink beads for inside the center of each flower. I think Margot's realistically are probably molded out of clay or plastic. I just couldn't find anything close enough and I didn't have time or patience to mold clay beads to be exact. So this works for me. This, and this is the screen accurate belt buckle that they used on Margot's outfit. And I, it's unbelievable that I was able to find that on Etsy. And I tell you in advance that I am sorry. I think I got the last one. As for the belt construction, I just got a one and a half inch belt at Joann's, made a little enclosure for it out of the same fabric. And I'm going to be using the screen accurate pearl belt buckle and just adding some closures in the back. The only thing I didn't make for this was the petticoat situation. So. We've got a couple layers here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see her. Let me move her up. So we have our top layer, which is our regular buffalo plaid fabric. We have our lining that's attached to the dress. And then I have all these little skirt situations that I bought under. I have this pleated situation. It's just cute and lightweight. These are from Amazon. Um, it has a underskirt. And then I have two knee length tool skirts. So they each have two layers of tool. You can easily make these. I just bought them because they were cheap on Amazon and I needed them for an event that I was going to. I think I made this dress in April and I was going off of like the back of her 
of like the waving shot from the back of the first teaser to figure out the length and then like the couple shots from the next teaser where you see like Margot brushing her hair in front of the mirror. And then of course, once the actual trailer came out, I realized that this is like much more puffy. So hence we added all of the, the petticoats underneath. So like I said, I made this dress originally back in April and when I'm releasing this video, it's July, like the end of the first week of July. The movie still doesn't come out, but I have a lot more information on what the dress actually looks like. So this is what the dress looked like when I did the first initial photo shoot for it before I realized that it needed to be taken up on the hemline and add all the puffy tulle skirts underneath. So we were doing the best that we could with the limited information we had. And at that point, I thought I was gonna be able to release this video to the public, but that's why it's been on hold because as I was editing it, the new trailer came out and I was like, oh, I was way off, but that's fine. Let's get into the actual reveal of the full and completely updated version of the dress. It has two modes, regular and snatched sport. <laughs> So I think that should cover everything, but if I missed something and you have a question, drop it in the comments below or you can DM me on Instagram at CostumeKens and I'd be happy to help. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching my video and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to come back for more Barbie content because it's inevitable that I will be making something else from this movie because I've already made five and at this point I feel like we're too far gone so we must proceed. We won't be making all 40, but we'll be making a dent for sure. You know that?